Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the best shoes that you can get on a budget. And um, yeah, I like testing budget shoes out because I like to help you guys, you know, like to find out what's a very, very good performer for a very cheap price because obviously shoes are pretty damn expensive nowadays and money can be tight. Uh, so hope this list helps you guys out. My uh, limit is 120 bucks. I mean, I, I, I definitely do understand like uh, some people saying that 120 bucks is a little high, but I mean, honestly, like if, if the shoe is 120 bucks then just don't get it, <laughs> you know what I mean? But honestly, there's not a, there's only like one shoe on this list that's 120 bucks. But anyways, if you guys wanna get any of these shoes, I'll try to leave a link in the description box, but let's get start off with the Under Armour Curry 305 is 80 bucks and this shoe is phenomenal. Really, really nice performer. I mean, if you want a very minimal feeling shoe, something that's very responsive, uh, the 305 is a great option. A uh, great traction, you know, really no problems with it. It picks up a little bit of dust, but overall it's really good. Cushion also is really nice, you know, uh, I believe it was full length micro G. You have good compression. There's a nice little bounce back as well. Materials for 80 bucks. I mean, not the best quality, but it's soft. It gets the job done on foot. Didn't really have any issues with support or anything either. So the 305 is a great option. Next, we got the Under Armour Spawn 3. You know, Under Armour makes some really good shoes for a very good price. With Spawn 3, it's only hundred bucks. Traction is phenomenal. Cushion, full length, micro G, super duper nice. Get a nice rebound back as well. I would say it's even bouncier than the 305. Materials, not the best quality. It's just like a mesh material, but super thin. It conforms to your foot very well, gets the job done support and all that is there one thing about the shoe that is a little bit of a downside is that rounded shape in the heel so that uh it kind of like the lateral stability isn't the best i never rolled my ankle in that shoe but it just didn't feel the most laterally stable shoe you know so um i mean obviously uh, if you have issues with that then it's probably not the best option um, but if you don't really have any issues with that, you should be fine with the Spawn 3. And last but not least from Under Armour, we got the Under Armour Flow Feature X, and that's 120 bucks. Um, but I mean, it's basically the Curry 8, but cheaper. And the Curry 8 is 160 bucks, you know what I mean? So the traction, you're getting god tier traction. is freaking too good, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stop is so damn nice. It picks up very minimal dust. A cushion, not the best. Um, I would say it's probably the worst out of like the Spawn 3 and the 305. You know, there's not a whole lot of compression, uh, but it's a very responsive cushion, you know. Material, you can get a mesh material. I do like this midfoot strap. The fit was pretty nice for me. So yeah, the Flow Future X is a super nice shoe. All right, next we got the 361 degree Aaron Gordon Zen 3. It's 105 bucks and it's really really nice i mean if you guys want to check out the review you guys definitely can the traction is top tier uh it does pick up a little bit of dust but for for the most part really really nice cushion also is very soft especially at first i would say it's even a little too soft for basketball but it definitely does bottom out it, it doesn't bottom out crazy though to the point where it's just like super stiff it bottoms out to a nice little compression which i like personally like cord feel i wouldn't say is the best though but you definitely do sacrifice that for uh the softer cushion which i feel like is a pretty good trade-off material also is super nice especially for the price the toe box you have a nice like kind of knit material uh no i don't really have any issues with like the fuse or anything it broke in nicely support i had no issues and it fit my foot very, very well. So the Zen 3, a really, really good option. Also, uh, it's a great looking shoe. All right, next we got the Puma Triple. It's 80 bucks. There's a lot of cheap shoes on this list. Only 80 bucks, guys. Uh, traction is phenomenal. You know, really, really nice bite. Uh, cushion, uh, not the best, but you know, it's uh, more of like a responsive type of cushion. Mesh material, uh, it's super thin. Uh, it's not the most supportive material and it's not the most supportive shoe. So if you're looking for a very supportive shoe, this probably isn't the best option. Uh, but if you're like a guard and you want to feel really light and very quick on your feet, this is a great option as well. All right, next we got the Nike Kyrie Low 4. The Kyrie Low 4 is one of my favorite shoes to play. And it's like top, top tier traction. I mean, really, really nice bite. You got that outsole curvature. Of course, if you're going to play outdoors, never pick the Kyrie Low 4 or the Kyrie 7 because the durability is terrible. But if you're playing on an indoor court, it's top tier traction. Cushion, yeah, uh, not that not that nice, you know, uh, but it's more of like a responsive type of cushion. There is a zoom unit in the forefoot, which is okay, um, but definitely not as good as the zoom turbo found in the Kyrie 7. 
Uh, the material is thin, you know, and uh, it doesn't feel too bulky or anything. You have a little bit of padding in the ankle area as well to make it feel cozy. Support is really good. You know, Kyrie's usually have very good support. And the Kyrie Low 4 looks pretty damn sick. So yeah, the Kyrie Low 4 is a great option. All right, next we got the Nike Giannis Immortality and that's only 80 bucks. And it's one of my favorite shoes to play in on this list. You know, the traction is also top tier. I don't know what it is, but I, I guess like companies the cheaper the shoe, the better the traction. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so weird, right? Um, but anyways, yeah, phenomenal traction. You got a herringbone. And uh, the cushion also, I mean, you would think that it's not that nice because it's just foam. There's no zoom in it or anything. And it's pretty caged in the heel area on the lateral side. But you know, there's a little bit of compression. Also a little bit of rebound back. Uh, Court feel is really good. And it's also a very responsive cushioning setup as well. Material is extremely, extremely thin. Uh, I didn't really have any issues with support. I wouldn't say it's the best shoe for support uh, because you know the material is kind of thin and also there's not a lateral counter in the forefoot, but like for me, it was adequate. Like I said in the review, if you're a heavy dude or uh, you want a lot of support, probably not the best option, but uh, for me, like I said, it was good. And then it's a great looking shoe as well. There's some cool colorways out as well. So yeah, the Giannis Immortality, one of my favorite shoes to play in. Next, we got the Nike Precision 5. It's even cheaper, it's 70 bucks. And I mean, yeah, as you guys all know, the Precision line has been solid. It's Nike's kind of like budget line. And yeah, I mean, there's really nothing bad I can say about that shoe. Traction is really, really good. Also super durable. Cushion is pretty much the exact same as the Giannis Immortality. You know, it's just a foam, but there's a nice little compression, nice little rebound back, good responsiveness good cord feel. Material is also really nice, especially for the price. You get a nice textile material. Fit is very snug, which I like a lot. And I had no issues with support. I would even say the, uh, the Precision 5 has better support than the Giannis Immortality and the Puma Triple. Next, we got the Adidas Own the Game. And uh, the Own the Game is uh, just kind of like came out of nowhere. It's a $65 shoe. I was on their side. I was like, uh, what is this shoe? It's super cheap. Uh, I don't really want to play in it. I feel like it's going to be very bad, but I was pleasantly surprised. It's actually very, very nice. Traction is surprisingly very good. A cushion also with the light motion. There's a little bit of compression. I would say mostly it's super responsive and kind of stiff uh, ju with just a tiny bit of compression in the heel. Materials are pretty trash as far as the quality goes, but it gets the job done on foot. Not a whole lot of issues with support or anything either. So yeah, definitely uh, the own the game. I wouldn't say it's the best performer on this list, um, but it's a good performer. It's actually very solid, especially for the price. And last but not least, we got the Adidas Dame 7. The Dame 7 is phenomenal. And I just got the Dame 7, like the EXT version. That shoe is also really, really nice. I got it on sale for like 60 bucks or like 80 bucks or something. And it's that all red colorway. I really like playing that shoe. Traction's phenomenal. Cushion is super nice, especially in the heel with a lot of compression from that light strike. Uh, materials, I, I mean, the overall feeling of the shoe, I would say like from my personal preference with, with what I want in a basketball shoe is a super light and minimal shoe. That's definitely not what the Dame 7 is. It's, it's definitely not like bulky or anything, but it's not like super light and super minimal feeling, you know what I mean? But anyways, it's still overall, it feels nice. Very fun shoe to play in as well. But anyways, that about wraps it up for this list. You know, these are all the budget shoes that I could find that are very good performers for a very good price. Uh, again, links are below uh, if you guys wanna copy any of these shoes. Hope this list helped you guys out and I'll see you guys in the next one.